wherein you have more amount of uh, uh, yolk present. So it's also known as polylecithin. This is seen in bony fishes, amphibians, reptiles, and monotremes. Monotremes are those animals which, uh, those mammals which lay eggs. So amphibians, again, yolk is a lot uh, like you know it, it, the amount of the yolk that is present is not very high so they're also known as least uh, mesolecithin so on the basic uh, basis of uh, distribution of the yolk then again these are of the three types that is isolecithin or homolecithin so a very sparse amount of uh, yolk is there it is uh, uniformly distributed example is echinoderms and the amphioxus Mesolecithal, like I already told you, seen in the frogs, moderate amount of yolk present. Telolecithal, yolk is highly concentrated towards one of the poles. The egg is divided into two ends. One is the vegetal pole and the animal pole, basically. So there, there is a polar bodies. So this will help in like, you know, so what will happen is in telolecithal L, uh, eggs, the yolk is distributed or highly concentrated towards the vegetal pole. And there's a gradual decrease uh, of the amount of yolk from the vegetal towards the animal pole. And this is seen in fishes, birds, reptiles. And you have central lecithal eggs wherein it is present or concentrated at the middle of the egg that is flying. And based on the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'll just have to come back to this. So, right. And on the presence or absence of shell, there are of two types. That is the cledoic eggs that are present on the land. So, they are present uh, or having, uh, what do you call it, uh, very hard calcareous shells that are present, example, reptiles and birds. Whereas, you have non-cledoic eggs, which are uh, do, do not have protective shell as such made up of calcium. So, this is seen in internal uh, fertilization or development whenever that is taking place. So, this is seen in mammals. And on the basis of type of development, again, eggs are of two types, determinate or mosaic eggs and then indeterminate or regulative eggs. Determinate egg wherein every portion of the egg is determined. The fate of every portion in the egg is determined. That means there is a specific function happening. So if at all any particular portion of that particular egg is removed, then that organ will be lacking in the embryo development or in the developed uh, organism. So this is seen in polyclads, nematids, annelids, mollusks, and acidians. Indeterminate or regulative eggs. So what is happening is the, if at all any uh, a part of the egg is removed, a portion of the egg is removed, then it will not affect the normal development. So if there is no determination or the future of the egg is not predetermined. So this is seen in amphioxus in mammals. So egg is again surrounded by different a a membranes. So you have the primary egg or the vitelline membrane. And then this is secreted by the follicles or the ooplasm. Let me see if at all I have a better picture. I should be having it in fact. Right. So like I told you, on the basis of distribution of yolk, isolecithal or homolecithal, and then you have teleolecithal eggs, and then, you know, you again, slightly, moderately, extremely telolecithal eggs are present, centrolecithal, mosaic and regulative eggs, wherein, you know, uh, uh, this is where every part is, uh, uh, like, you know, mosaic is also known as the determinate eggs, indeterminate or regulative eggs is present in echinodermates and chordates. Shell type, cledoic and non-cledoic, like I told you. And then the primary egg is having the first mem secreted uh, um, membrane, which is known as the vitelline membrane or zona pellucida and zona reticulae. Secondary egg has, uh, this is again um, uh, secreted by the ovary. So you have the chorion, which is present. And then in duricates and fishes, this is called as the chorion. And then zona radiate and zona pellucida are the primary uh, uh, like, you know, membranes which develop in the mammals. So secondary membranes are secreted by the oviducts and this includes the shell secreted by the shell glands. So they are present in sharks, reptiles and birds.
So you have a tertiary layer also. The egg, in fact, is secreted by the oviduct. So example is the albumin shell membrane shell of the hens. So this is about the eggs, in fact, the different kinds of eggs that are present. And when it come to the, comes to the fertilization, you get to see, uh, uh, like, you know, like I told you, this is the basic chick egg that you can see. And this is how the oviduct and the um, parts are present. So when it comes to, this is the eggs of the eutherian mammals. That is the mammals, basically. So you have corona radiator, zona pellucida, and then the hyaluronase enzyme tries to penetrate to, through these layers so that when once the sperm enters, there will be fertilization. Now, when it comes to fertilization, we get to see that in fertilization, what will happen is, it is actually defined as the fusion of male and female gametes or the spermat fusion of spermatozoan and ovum respectively. So again, it's, it's based on two phases this or, uh, and uh, ha it has two conditions that takes place. So one is union of the haploid chromosomes. So and then restoration of the diploid genetic balance that has to occur and then activation of the substances of the fused gametes, both cytoplasmic and nuclear, which results in the formation of normal development of the fertilized uh, the embryo. I have that process. Please let me just give it. Right. So whenever fertilization is taking place, we have to see that uh, the fabrication of duplicoid, uh, do, uh, diploid set of the chromosomes is there. And at the same time, you have uh, the um, just a second, determination of the chromosomal gender that is taking place. And at the same time, see that there is proper cleavage division for the embryogenesis. So for this, there are a few criteria that have to be followed. So male nucleus enters the egg cytoplasm, then it becomes the male pronucleus. After and then there is a, a, a result of sperm fuming, uh, fusing with the egg, and then this is followed by, and there is a meiotic division that is taking place, and then this is followed by the second meiotic division, wherein the nucleus of the ova becomes the female pronucleus. Then both the haploid and uh, male and the female pronuclear move towards each other, fuse to form the zygote, which undergoes cleavage. So this is again. Uh, you have certain criteria that is you have to have a, a release of calcium because cortical reaction whatever is there is uh, done only when in the presence of calcium in fact because uh, this is stored in the egg endoplasmic reticulum also and then you have a cortical reaction wherein you have a cortical reaction which is being uh, like you know cortical granules which are going to release the uh, uh, or which are going to be ruptured because of the uh, uh, simultaneous release of calcium. So they are all going to be released into the, the uh, uh, granules are released into the perivitaline space in the egg and then they cause the hardening or the uh, uh, like, you know, hardening of the vitiline membrane or the zona pellucida. Then this causes fertilization. So again, you have uh, influx of sodium into the uh, egg cytoplasm, reorganization of the egg cytoplasm. Then meiosis will take place Hydrogen ions have to come out of the cytoplasm because, uh, you know, in case they're there, it, it increases the uh, acidity uh, and then you have an increase in the metabolism because of which there is zygote development. So this is how it is going to take place. The sperms enter into the egg membrane and then the acrosomal uh, enzymes, that is the hyaluronidases, release the leg or rupture uh, or digest this uh, eggs uh, vitiline membrane in fact and proteins go into the act of the uh, sperm try to bind with the zona uh, like the plasma membrane of the egg and then you have the plasma membrane of the uh, sperm and the egg being fused together and then release of the sperm pronucleus and this is the egg pronuclei which are uh, taking uh, uh, which have been formed because of which the male and the female pronuclei uh, are going to fuse together to form the diploid. These are haploid so far. So these 
uh, fuse together to form the zygote or the nucleus, which is diploid in nature. So this is about fertilization as of now. So then once this is done, you have cleavage taking place. I'll have to go back to cleavage again. Please give me one moment. Right. So what is exactly cleavage? Fertilization is uh, a process wherein form, like you know, fusion of male and female pronucleasy. In the cleavage, what will happen is uh, it is the division of the fertilized egg into progressively smaller cellular units or the blastomes. So a series of mitotic divisions take place and then this uh, 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 cleavage state cells are called as blastomeres and then uh, there is a rapid rate of cell division taking place and result of the cleavage is that there is a unicellular zygote uh, uh, like you know which gives rise to a multicellular body as such. So there is an increase in the number of cells and then because of which there is a decrease in the size of the cells. So basically what we have to look into when it comes to cleavage is that you have uh, uh, the fertilized egg repeatedly dividing. This is the diploid fertilized egg repeatedly dividing by a process that is mitosis and produces blastomers. This produces a uh, like in you know, a solid mass of cells which is known as morula and then morula and uh, this is seen in mammals basically then you have a majority of the animals undergoing a cleavage from within which is known as blastula stage then this blastula will further cleave to uh, undergo a gastrulation because of which you have the uh, gastro uh, this is the gastrula formation so this will end of the day, like, you know, form the ectoderm, endoderm and the mesoderm in the organisms. And these give rise to different kinds of organs in the body. So cleavage is necessary for providing of adequate number of cells for construction of tissues and organs. Embryo is not growing. The size is going to remain the same, but the number of cells will increase. So there is no change in the shape of the embryo during cleavage amount of DNA is going to increase. So that is one thing. And the process of segmentation establishes the initiation of other next developmental stage, that is the gastrulation. So when it comes to the patterns and the planes of cleavage, we get to see that there is a glue groove or constriction, which will help. And then, you know, it starts, you know, uh, the however cleavage is going to take place, so there is a glue groove that is going to form. So this is can this can be on different kinds of planes that is seen. So when it comes to that, please give me a moment. I think I have it somewhere else. Right. right. So you have different kinds of planes for that matter. So the cleavage results in modula, then you have the blastula and the blastoderm and the blastocele. So when it comes to the planes of cleavage, you can see there is a meridional plane wherein there is the, the egg is divided into two axes. So you have uh, uh, animal and the vegetal axis or the animal pole and the vegetal pole. This gives rise to, this is how the meridional plane takes place because of which egg is divided into two equal halves. And then you're going to have an animal half and a vegetal half. And then in the case of a vertical uh, uh, plane, what happens is it the cleavage is going to take place further along uh, on either side of the meridional plane. And then the furrows pass from the animal to the vegetal pole. And because of which you do not have uh, cleaved cells in equal sizes. You're going to get unequal size uh, cells that are present. So which are known as macromeres and micromeres. And then you have some uh, like, you know, cleavage, which is by the equatorial plane. So this vertical plane, a meridional plane is seen in, uh, meridional plane cleavage is seen in different kinds of uh, frogs, and then uh, first cleavage for, for of chick. Vertical plane seen in, uh, again, chick only. And then equatorial plane is seen in fifth cleavage furrow of the ambistroma mucilatum. 
and then equatorial plane is wherein you have uh, the cleavage plane bisects the egg at right angles to the main axis. So you are going to get egg in two halves in total. And then you have latitudinal plane wherein similar to the equatorial plane, but it is on either side of the equator. So you're going to get a transverse or a horizontal cleavage. You can just have a look at it in your textbook also. And again, based on the yoke that is present, uh, uh, like, you know, you have different kinds of cleavage patterns that have been identified. So you have total or holoblastic cleavage where entire furrow, the furrow, whatever is cre created because of cleavage is going to completely divide the egg so that it can be either equal or unequal. Ma then, yes. Furrow means a hole. Furrow means, see, I, I'll tell you uh, one minute. I think I have a picture of that. It's not a hole, basically. What it is, is, uh, wait, I'll show you that. Please have a, uh -huh. so what is happening is in the case of uh, once, uh, how do I tell you? Yeah, this gastrulation, if you see over here, you have an invagination, a furrow is creation of the gap like this or a space. Oh, okay, okay. Okay? Okay. That's good. So here you have different kinds of uh, patterns of cleavage. So when you when you get to see, you have isolicetal, spiral, radial, and all of these. This picture is actually very uh, good. Let me try to enlarge it if it's possible. Again, you have determinate and indeterminate cleavage also. So when it comes to holoblastic cleavage, have I got a better picture than what you have? I'm trying to see types of cleavage patterns. Let's just stick with whatever is there right now. Patterns of cleavage. Yes. So total or holoplastic cleavage where it the entire egg is going to be bisected. It can be equal or unequal stage. And then you have uh, yeah, you can see over here holoplastic cleavage. And then entire furrow is being formed over here. And then you have the determinate and the indeterminate cleavage also, wherein fate of the embryonic cell, each and every cell, whatever is there, you're going to have a particular function for that particular cell. So in case there is any uh, removal of that particular cell, then what will happen is you do not have uh, like, you know, that particular organ being developed. So when it comes to, uh, uh, that is in the case of analytes, molars, and acidines, you can see that. In the case of indeterminate cleavage, like I told you, the fate of the cells in the embryo are not exactly known earlier or predetermined. And this is seen in vertebrates and in the, uh, echinodermates. When it comes to holoblastic cleavage, like I told you, you have bilateral cleavage. And it can be seen in, uh, uh, like, you know, the kind of uh, symmetry that is seen. Uh, when the cleavage furrow cuts the egg into two equal cells, you can see that it can be either radially symmetrical, bilateral, or symmetrical or spiral also. So when it comes to bilateral cleavage, let us just have a look whether we have bilateral cleavage here. Unfortunately, no. But this picture you have in your uh, textbook also, you can just have a look at it. So when it comes to patterns, and uh, different kinds of cleavages, you can just have a look. So this is the, um, yeah, holoblastic cleavage, this is bilateral cleavage as seen in tunicates. So uh, one, uh, the zygote into two cells, into eight cells. And so you have micromeres and the mesomeres over here. So this is one thing in uh, like, you know, in bilateral. So two of the first blastomeres may be larger than the other two. So this is more uh, like, you know, uh, more observed in subsequent cleavages. When it comes to radial cleavages, then this is seen in uh, wherein what happens is first thing it undergoes, there is a simple cleavage first. And then once this cleavage occurs two times, then you have a 90 degree rotation after which there is a cleavage again because of which you have eight cells being formed. So 
this is the two cell four cell cell stage and then this is the eight cell stage because at the 90 degree angle you have another cleavage taking place so when it comes to rotational cleavage let me see if i have that radial and spiral cleavage is superficial holoblastic So this is seen in rotational cleavage, wherein as seen in the mammals. We, yeah. Over here, you can see that first division is along the meridional axis. So it gives rise to two daughter cells and then they divide equatorially. Because of which you get different kinds of uh, cells. So you have a holoblastic cleavage with the formation of a blastocele, as in the case of a sea urchin. Meso, uh, let's say the egg gives rise to holoblastic uh, cleavage again. So you have the formation of the blastocy as in the case of frogs. Tidal acetyl egg, you have a discoidal cleavage. And this is how the blastocy and uh, as seen in the bird formation. Central acetyl egg has a superficial cleavage, wherein you have the formation uh, of uh, equally distributed uh, cells. This is seen in the uh, insects. So these are the diff different kinds of uh, cleavages that are present. And what are the factors that control the cleavages? It is the yolk. So the amount of yolk and uh, if at all there is less yolk present, then uh, cleavage is going to occur uh, like, you know, rapidly. And uh, as compared to the uh, presence of yolk, which is there in more, uh, then, then the cleavage is going to uh, be uh, uh, conducted less rapidly. Then the uh, that is why the yolk influences the course of the cleavage. Then you also have to see the organization of the egg. That is, whatever how the pattern of the cleavage is there. This is based on the cell division chromosome movement association with the spindle, uh, mitotic spindle fibers and the asters that are present. So what will happen is usually cleavage furrow is going to be formed at right angles to the axis of cellular elongation. So this is done based on the spindle fiber presence. And then viscosity of the cortex in the egg. So whatever cleavage furrow is being formed, the thickness of it or the viscosity of it makes an, uh, what do you call it, uh, makes a difference. So the cortex is going to be essential uh, for the formation of cytokinesis, that is division of the egg or the cytoplasm. So only egg fragments that have the cortex or the cortical material will be able to divide. Then later, furrow formation, whatever is seen, is going to be independent of the uh, both spindle and aster formation. Once this is done, uh, we have the blastulation or the blast uh, blastula formation. So repeated cleavage of all the eggs will give the blastomers, and then this is how the blastocele will be formed. So these blastulae are uh, of two types, in chordates especially. So those blastulae without any kind of accessory or trophoblast tissue are seen in the amphioxus, that is the frog. So entire blastula, whatever is present, is going to be uh, uh, made up of uh, formative cells only as seen in the frog. And then those that have the auxiliary tissue. So this is seen in uh, uh, fishes, reptiles, birds and mammals. So you have both formative cells that are present and uh, that they form the embryonic body and the auxiliary cells that are concerned with the trophoblasts. So in the blastula, let me see if I have a better picture. Please give me a moment. Right, please listen. In the blastula, again, ectodermal uh, area is present that will give rise to the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, let me see if I have a picture of it. Right. So in the blastula itself, you have the epidermal layer of this, uh, the ectodermal area that is going to give you the, uh, the epidermal layer of the skin. 
then this itself will give rise to the neural tube and the uh, the nervous system notochordal area is going to be present because of which you have uh, uh, the uh, which gives rise to the primitive axis and then you have two areas that is the notochordal area that gives rise to the mesoderm and then you have the uh, that is there in amphioxus and then endodermal area that gives rise to the future lining of the gut. So then blastula is presented in many shapes in different uh, like you know amongst the animal kingdom in fact. So it can be solid round you can just have a look at it in your textbook in fact you have got a very good picture of it there. So in your textbook you have the uncleaved egg which will produce the eight cell stage then the early blastula stage. And then you have the late blastula and the sectional view, that is they have taken a section of it. And then you have the vegetal pole and the uh, dorsal posterior uh, view also. So this arrangement in particular with uh, helps in the development of the gastrula formation or in the gastrulation, which is the next step. So most of the sp uh, species, whatever spaces that, that is being formed over here, this uh, uh, which is known as a uh, gas, uh, like you know, the blastocele. This blastocele formation is very much necessary. So, let us now get into uh, gastrulation. When it comes to gastrulation, you're going to see that in gastrulation, it is the process where major organs are formed. So, predominant uh, features of this uh, gastrulation are rearrangement of all the cells that are present. And then there is a cellular division. There is no much significant growth to present. And then metabolism changes is very high at this particular point of time. Now, again, so you have different kinds of uh, process in gastrulation. So when it comes to it, you have gamete formation, fertilization, zygote, cleavage, gastrulation, organogenesis. Then later, it is a three-layer formation. So gastrula. So once it is done, first stage of cellular uh, differentiation, and formation of the uh, more like you know different kinds of layers. Sorry. Uh, right. So in this, like I told you, you have a moments epiboli and emboli. So we'll just have a look at it. You have the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endodermal layers that are formed, and then you have in gastrulation or like you know. The outer layer forming the ectoderm, the endoderm layer, uh, like you know, inner layer, innermost is the endoderm, and mesoderm is the partially filled inner space. So, a lot of cells that are present, you have again formation of the spaces. So, this three layers ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm, how they are formed is, for example, in the xenopus blastula, that is the frog blastula. This is the animal pole, this is the vegetal pole. So, Animal pole outer layer, you have the epidermis formation, and this is the neural plate. This is the mesoderm, and this is the endoderm, which gives rise to the different kind of uh, structures. So this is the neural plate, gives rise to the nervous system, in fact. And uh, then you have the mesodermal cells, which give rise to the in, uh, organs. So when it comes to the derivative layers, like you, I've already discussed with you, so the mesoderm, ectoderm, and endoderm give rise to different organs. So for that, first thing is when you have gastrulation, there is a combination of moments. So what will happen is first processes, you have epiboli and emboli, wherein uh, um, uh, the moments of the ectodermal blastomers flatten, rapidly expand, and then eventually spread over. So they migrate towards the inner blastoma to form the endodermal and the mesodermal cells. Emboli is where inward mi mi migration of the future notochord is taking place. So because of which you have a notochord being formed. And then you have the invagination as you can see over here. So in invagination, just the in, in sinking of the layers of the endodermal cells from the vegetal region takes place. And then this is being pushed inside. And then you have ingression. Ingression is wherein you have the endoderm forming cells migrate from the surface of the blastula inwardly and several different and separate inward migration of one or more cells. So you have polyinvagination in case of reptiles, birds and mammals. And then you have the involution. Involution is where the 
endodermal blastomeres will roll from the vegetal region of the blastula spread underneath the surface of the layer of the blastula. So this is seen in amphioxus birds and mammals. And then you have the process of delamination and epiboli, like I already told you. Delamination is splitting and migration of uh, uh, the, uh, the cells. And this is seen in mammals and birds. And then you have epiboli, wherein you have one sheet of the cells forming uh, expansion of the one sheet of the cells over another sheet of the cells. This is also seen in amphibian sea urchins and tunicates. So to summarize this particular lesson, we have seen the different kinds of uh, eggs that are there. Broadly, eggs are classified as microlecithal, meso and megalecithal. And then you have uh, fertilization taking place. And then you have the blastoder, uh, like, you know, a blastulation and the gastrulation taking place. So this will give rise to organogenesis. So in organogenesis, again, you have the formation of... Um, what do you call it? Cleavage, blastula, gastrula, like I already told you. And then you have the new relation or the formation of the neural tube. So the, these are the processes as seen uh, in uh, different kinds of uh, organisms. And when it comes to the new relation, formation of the neural plate. Formation of the neural plate. This is the different kinds of gastrulation in uh, all the uh, animals, um, amphibians and the uh, mammals, in fact blastopore lip and then you have the neural tube formation formation of epiblast and hypoblast primitive streak formation neural plate formation and the tubulation wherein in tubulation what is happening is organ system is being formed all the organ cells or the tissues are initially in the form of a sheet or a mass and then they later form into the organs and the organ systems so what is happening whenever there is a common embryological change that is taking place I will just share it again. So when it comes to the formation of a neural plate or a neural uh, tube, you can just see over here, different kinds of uh, primitive neural plate formation, shaping of the neural plate and the neural tube or, and the neural groove being formed. And then this is done. This is known as neuralation, like I told you. And then you have the Notochord. This picture is seen in your textbook, so you can just have a look at it, in fact. And so when it comes to the common embryological changes, you can see that there is elongation of embryo, formation of tail, subdivision of the body into head, neck and tail. And then this is again uh, um, uh, studied by uh, seeing the age of the embryo, the size of the embryo and the morphological structures of the embryo. So when it comes to ectoderm, Ectoderm gives rise to different kinds of, uh, like, you know, uh, organs, in fact. So, ectoderm gives rise to the central nervous system. And then you have uh, the um, formation of uh, development of the eyes, in fact, and then the fin folds and the ears taking place. Endoderm and its derivatives. Let me see if I have a better. Ma'am, fin folds means? Sorry? Fin folds. Fin folds is basically the external gills and the balancing organs in the uh, fishes. Whatever that fins are developing. No, it is like basically like this. So this development of the fin and the folds in it is from the ectoderm. Okay. 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 And when it comes to the endoderm and its derivatives, you can see that in uh, endoderm, you have the formation of uh, uh, different kinds of uh, accessory organs such as the liver, the lungs. Have I got a better? Please give me a moment. I'm trying to see before I share with you itself. Right. So the endoderm gives rise to the lungs, the liver, the pancreas, in fact, and you have the biliary apparatus, all of this coming from the endoderm. Now, when it comes to the mesoderm, in the mesoderm, it uh, gives rise to the muscular uh, or the musculoskeletal system as such. So, from the mesoderm, you are going to get the muscular system, all the muscles that are present, uh, longitudinal muscles, the uh, 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 then what do you call it, the circular muscles that are present. And then this leads to 
the formation of the skeletal system also. And so you have sclerotome, myotome, and dermatome. So you can just make out the names accordingly and what is going to come out of the mesoderm. So when it comes to it, you have the muscular system, the skeletal system. Uh, so all the different kinds of vertebrae and then the uh, different uh, development of paired limbs and uh, pectoral and pelvic girdles and axial skeleton. And then you have the heart and the circulatory system coming off, out of or derived from the mesoderm. And the urinogenital system, that is your reproductive system, is also being developed by the uh, um, uh, mesoderm and its der uh, derivatives. So you have got a good picture of it and role of germinal layers and organogenesis in your textbook. In fact, you can just have a look at it. So when it comes to the ectoderm, you have the... Uh, somatic ectoderm giving rise to uh, the uh, epidermis and its derivatives, the neural crest giving rise to the branchial or the pharyngeal skeleton, the neuroderm which is giving uh, rise to the spinal cord, brain, motor nerves. When it comes to the mesoderm, mesoderm gives rise to the notochord degeneration and uh, so you have epimeres, mesomeres and hypomeres. Epimeres give dermatome, sclerotome and myotome which gives rise to the dermis and different, uh, the, like, you know, vertebral column, cranium, appendicular skeleton, skeletal muscles. Mesomeres gives rise to the urinogenital uh, systems. Hypomeres give rise to the different kinds of body, body cavity and the parietal and the visceral peritonea, the blood and the spleen and the gonads. Endoderm gives rise to, to the uh, complete uh, digestive system. And then you have uh, the... Uh, for in the lining of the vagina and the urethra and the middle and uh, ear and the eustachian tubes, the respiratory system, thyroid and glands, different kinds of glands form the endodermal system. So this is all about our uh, uh, reproduction that is uh, like, you know, seen and then uh, blastulation that is fertilization, blastulation, gastrulation that is seen and what are the different, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, let us say the different kinds of uh, like you know uh, layers which give rise to the different kinds of uh, organs altogether and then during this process embryo is segmented into somites and this is going to be distributed again so after the complete development of the in, uh, embryo parturition or the birth of the young one will take place so when it comes to the fetal membrane in chick and placentation environment, just give me one moment, please. Um, and, th and there is one more lesson for you all, which is uh, placentation and fetal membranes in chick and placentation in mammals. Uh, please give me one moment and I'll just be back.
Right. Uh, so, uh, right, have I started? Uh, Wait a minute. Right. So, when it comes to the fetal membranes in the chick and the placentation in mammals, you can just see that three classes of vertebrates are there, which are going to be uh, grouped under amniota, that is uh, presence of the amnionic membrane. And then you have the viviparous animals, which give rise to or which, uh, which uh, come after the birth of the, uh, like, you know, the birth of the young one for that matter. So, again, you have the fetal membranes in chick. You can see the yolk sac over here. This is the yolk sac. And then yolk, it forms an important embryonic uh, membrane or uh, like, you know, which is present. So fetal membranes are basically organs which help in protection of the embryo. And then this gives the nutrition, the respiration, excretion. And all of this is done until the embryo or the, uh, the newly formed organism becomes completely in independent. So in the reptiles, birds, mammals, fetal membranes are present and they form due, uh, are present only during the period of embryonic development alone. So in the yolk sac, like I already told you, it is an important embryonic membrane, helps in to absorb the yolk from the egg. And then this is connected by a yolk sac stalk that is present and then uh, this is continuous with the gut of the embryo. Endodermal cells are also present. They secrete the digestive uh, enzymes. And then at the end, this is sucked into the gut of the embryo and the walls of the abdominal cavity close behind it. So function of the yolk sac that is there is that helps in spreading the large amount of yolk, functions as a respiratory organ and acts as a hemopoietic, that is uh, organ from the liver, like the liver. So it helps in uh, like development of the blood. And a yolk sac also serves as origin of blood cells at later stages of development. Amnion and chorion. So you have amniotic uh, amnion and the chorion that is present. So these help in, uh, like, you know, uh, they are developed simultaneously and extra embryonic, uh, uh, like, you know, somatoplure is also there. You please refer your textbook because it ha that has got a better uh, image, in fact. And... Uh, so this has a double uh, layer to it, which is known as a double flow fold of somatoplure drawn upon it. And then this fully formed amnion will then see uh, enclose the entire embryo in a fluid-like cavity, which is known as the amniotic cavity. So now the functions of the amnion and the chorion are basically that when the head egg, uh, like you know, is laid on the dry land, developing embryo is present in the amniotic fluid, provides the medium for, uh, like you know, hydration in case there is only dry area, and then amniotic fluid acts as an efficient shock absorber, and then this isolates the embryo from the eggshell also, helps and uh, like you know, protects it from the addition of the uh, uh, like you know or to the shell or friction any kind of friction that is present the chorionic cavity has also space for the allantois which uh, like you know for uh, expansion then you have an allantois that is present which develops as a blind imagination and then on the floor of the hind gut and this is later going to be formed into uh, or pressed against the shell membranes receives allantoic blood cells or uh, like, you know, from uh, like, you know, or uh, blood vessels, in fact, connected to the hindgut by narrow allantoic stalk. And then at the time of hatching, what happens is the umbilical cord breaks and allantois rises up. So the function of allantois is it acts as a reservoir of uh, embryonic uh, like, you know, excretory waste such as uric acid. So urine is prevented from escaping to the other regions because it is harmful for the embryo. So this allantoy uh, chorion membrane is richly vascularized with a lot of blood vessels, comes in contact with the shell membrane, forms embryonic respiratory surfaces, 
continues to function until the chick is able to breathe on its own. So this is about the allantois and the, what do you call it, uh, the fetal membranes in the chick that is present. Unfortunately, I could not get a better image. I'm sorry for that. Uh, so we will just like look into the last chapter for us, which is uh, the types of placenta based on the histological uh, uh, region. So I will just share again. Please give me a moment. So now placenta is where you have a, a like, you know, is a, the formation or uh, it's a compound structure where, which has uh, like, you know, both the fetal and the mammal, uh, like, you know, the maternal, uh, the area where the fetal and the maternal tissue are uh, joined together is known as the placenta. The fetal part of the placenta is formed by the chorion uh, allantois, which is, uh, and uh, the maternal part belongs to the uh, just a second, let me go to the next slide. Right. So, yes. So, you have the placenta organ built up of maternal fetal tissues. So, fetal placenta has extra embryonic membranes that is chorion, allantois, or yolk sac from the tissues of the embryo. Maternal has only the mother's uterine endometrium. So basic, on the basis of, uh, so you can classify the different types of placenta based on the degree of intimacy that is present. Uh, how much, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, so again, there are types of placenta based on the origin that is fetal and ma maternal placenta. We have just seen that. And types of uh, placenta based on the nature of the fetal membranes and based on the types of implantation, based on the types of histological relation, and then you have based on the distribution of uh, uh, the villi that are present. So in the case of a degree of uh, intimacy, like it's, uh, like it's known as, you have the non-deciduous or the semi-placenta, whereas implantation is superficial in fact, and uh, you can just have a look at it. It is there based on uh, your uh, in your textbook, 12.3.5 types of uh, placenta based on uterine endometrium condition. So non-deciduous placenta or semi-placenta, what happens is mere portion of the fetal and maternal components are present. So they will get separated without any damage. So this type of placenta is seen in horses, zebra, tapir, etc. And then deciduous placenta or pla uh, placenta vera as it is known as, what will happen is in this kind, you have your pictures in your textbook. So you can just have a look at it, page number 185. Uh, so uh, it's there in cat, dog, primates and rodents. So at the time of uh, like, you know, childbirth or not exactly like, I mean, the organ uh, organism birth, parturition along with the fetal tissue component is taking place. So this gets torn and shredded uh, and shredded. And then there's an open wound in the wall of uterus will form because of which bleeding takes place. You also have a contra deciduate placenta wherein you have uh, it is seen in paramils and talpa, which is a mole. In this loss of maternal tissue, fetal part of the uh, placenta is uh, absorbed in situ by maternal leukocytes. So fetal placenta is retained inside the mother's body at a type of birth. Now, based on the distribution of villi, you have the diffused placenta here, and then you have the cotyledonary placenta, diffused uh, numerous placenta present. I need another five minutes to finish this uh, particular lesson, and then you can uh, leave. Okay. So, in this uh, type of classification, you have diffused placenta, villi, and numerous scattered uniformly, seen in different kinds of mammals such as pigs, horse mares, etc., and in cetaceae, that is your whales. Cotyledonary placenta is seen wherein uh, the villi gets aggregated in different uh, special areas. Groups or patches of villi are formed into small tufts. And then this is found in cattle and sheep. And then you have the intermediate type, 
where uh, you have the blastocyst uh, provided with villi and cotyledons. Isolated villi are scattered between the cotyledons is found in camel and giraffe. And then you have the zonary placenta. This is where, you know, the, uh, uh, the villi confirmed uh, to a girdle-like or in the middle region. This is seen in carnivores and uh, the, uh, this can be either complete or incomplete. Complete is seen in raccoon. Sorry, uh, complete is seen in dogs, cats and uh, seals. Incomplete is seen in raccoons. The example in your textbook is dog, cat, lion, tiger, mongoose. Discoidal placenta, simplest form, found in rabbits and other rodents. So chorionic villi are present only at one small disc-shaped area right over the blastocyst. So uh, uh, such a placenta is seen in bats, rodents. And then you have the metadiscoidal placenta. You can just have a look at it, multicontinental diffuse zonary discoid. Metadiscoidal placenta is seen in primates where the villi are first scattered all over, but later they get uh, restricted to only one or two discs. So this can be either a single disc seen in man, by disc seen in um, uh, uh, monkeys. Then the next classification is based on the involvement of fetal and maternal tissues. So this is the, your epitheliochorial placenta, wherein contact between uh, what happens is epithelium is right next to the maternal uh, placental epithelium. So the maternal side includes the endothelial wall of the maternal blood vessel, connective tissue, and the epithelium of the uterus. And then you have the fetal side, which has the chorionic epithelium, uh, connective tissue, and the endothelium of the blood vessels. This is one thing. And then when it comes to the syndesmochorial, uh, placenta seen in you ruminant ungulates. That is your ruminating animal, such as your uh, cattle, the sheep, the deer, giraffe. So you have uh, amounts of uterine epithelium absent because of which there is direct contact of the uh, chorion with the connective tissue of the uterus. So only five barriers are there and that are present in between the two blood streams. So this is uh, seen in, like I told you, ruminants or the cut chewing and ungulates. That is your camel, giraffe, all of these animals. Endothelial chorial placenta, wherein the uterine mucosa is very much reduced. Chorionic epithelium comes in contact with the endothelial walls of the maternal blood vessels. So this is again seen in uh, feet, uh, like, you know, you don't have number of barriers uh, between uh, the fetal and the maternal bloodstream, which is only four, in fact, found in cats, dogs, lions, etc. And then you have the hemochorial plate. Hemochorial placenta is seen in primates, including the man, lemur, apes, man. And then you have different kinds of insectivores in bats and rodents. So discoidal, metadiscoidal placentae are uh, this type. And so there's a forcible tearing away of the maternal tissue. That is why there is a lot of bleeding and maternal blood flows and drains out through the uterine. And then you have the hemoendothelial uh, placenta, wherein, uh, so there is an, uh, like, you know, there's a lot of fetal and maternal tissue association taking place. All three components of the maternal placenta and two components of the fetal placenta are completely eroded. So fetal blood vessels directly dip into the blood lacunae of the uterine wall. So there is only one barrier present between the fetal and the maternal circulation. And this is seen in rodents, that is your rats, rabbits, and guinea pigs. So, and then this is the classification based on, uh, sorry, I, where did it go off? Please give me a moment. We are almost done with this particular uh, lesson. Right. So anyway, let me just like tell you the functions of placenta basically. And we have seen so far and then we have seen the uh, different types of placenta based on mode of implantation also. That is uh, superficial uh, and then the interstitial placenta and the eccentric placenta. Superficial is seen in uh, pigs, cows and sheep. And uh, interstitial is seen in the case of man and some rodents. Eccentric is wherein early blastocyst lies between the uterine folds. And uh, then, uh, for some reason, this is not coming. Anyway. Mm. Apologies, just give me one moment. Let me take in the right uh, 
uh, like you know PowerPoint. In fact, I had downloaded it, so I'm unable to find it right now. So we will just uh, restrict to this particular one right now. So anyway. So when it comes to the uh, uh, different kinds of uh, functions of placenta, helps in the passage of nutrients to the, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, to the uh, child or uh, to the um, uh, growing organism, oxygen to the embryo, water, oxygen for that matter, all the different kinds of uh, molecules, minerals, ions. And then it helps in the uh, filtration or uh, like, you know, uh, passing of urea carbon dioxide then there is separation of the fetal and the maternal blood circulation taking place. So it's a selectively permeable membrane, does not allow harmful substances to pass from the maternal side to the fetal side. And then it also helps in development of immunity for the uh, uh, growing uh, fetus. And it uh, helps in secretion of four important hormones, estrogen, progesterone, chorionic, uh, gonadotropic, and placental lactogen, in fact. And at the same time, it helps in storage of fat, glucose, so, uh, especially during the early embryonic stages for, before the formation of liver. Now, you have different kinds of disadvantages also when it comes to that. So, there is a possibility for the placenta uh, to circulate uh, or, uh, you know, uh, different kinds of infectious organisms such as syphilis, smallpox, and you have your uh, Zika virus. HIV, which are being uh, like, you know, passed on, shared to the uh, fetal, growing fetus also. Certain drugs also pass into the fetus, harms the em developing embryo. Example is thalidomide. And uh, then mercury also, you have seen the Minamata disease. So because of it, there is defective formation of four and hind limbs. So to summarize this particular lesson, we are going to see that course of evolution, you have right from stages that is fishes to a terrestrial, you have different kinds of development of embryo, uh, embryonic membranes. And uh, uh, like, you know, the egg and the yolk, they have prevented uh, the, uh, like, you know, the embryo from uh, uh, being exposed to mechanical shocks, nutrient, uh, nutrition, respiration, excretion, etc. Placenta is one organ that is uh, forming the intimate connection that is between the fetal and the maternal tissues for purposes of nutrition. And it can be classified based on different uh, criteria, like or, like I already told you. So you have uh, different kinds of uh, placenta that are present based on the formation, or like you know, based on the degree of contact, and based on the uh, like you know uh, uh, between the chorionic villi and uh, the maternal endometrium. Then based on histological relations, based on the or types of origins for that matter. So when it comes to the, uh, like, you know, uh, placenta, again, they can be classified into choreovitaline and choreoelentoic. And based on the degree of uh, damage or the depending upon the intimacy that is present at the time of parturition, how they are present. So that is non-deciduate or semi-placenta. And based on the distribution of chorionic villi, diffuse or zonary or metadiscoidal. So these are the different kinds of uh, distribution of the placenta in the uh, mammals, basically. So this is all your uh, semester three uh, uh, topics. In fact, we have seen ecology, zoogeography, and the developmental biology. So uh, uh, that's what all the best, uh, uh, like you know. And I have completed my syllabus. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, can you share the powerpoints in our group? Like, uh... so yes. Uh, if you just put in a message, I'll try to share it. No. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you.